Mr. Gautam is a construction manager management professional with 23 years of experience in the building materials industry. Gautam worked in leadership roles of sales, strategy, marketing and innovation with best-in-class MNCs like Larson & Tobro, Lafarge India and Fidelite. Currently, Gautam manages the Fidelite Large Users Business Vertical that brings the top-of-the-line building envelope solutions, including waterproofing and insulation for large construction projects in India. So let's welcome Mr. Gautam. When it comes to waterproofing, I think uh, Mr. Mehta also touched upon this. Today, modern waterproofing is uh, gaining a lot more importance in the last decade or so. Mainly, urbanization is driving you know, the way spaces are being built uh, shrinking in terms of uh, weight and going more vertical, maximizing the space utilization, climate change is not just about uh, the rains out in uh, the Konkan coast, Mumbai and so on, but I think the way, uh, the vagaries of nature itself, the kind of floods we see sometimes, whether it was Chennai or Hyderabad, they cause a, they, they really cause a havoc uh, in those situations and uh, the damage damages can be unimaginable. The other thing which uh, I wanted to add is uh, one of the also the reasons why we are seeing problems today more often is the fast pace of construction itself in, in terms of concrete. Yeah, so the pace at which concreting is being done, it's getting more susceptible, prone to cracking, sand quality is going bad and so on. So on the on the architecture side, obviously, you know, the, the buildings that we are seeing more, the new age buildings that we are seeing is giving a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, the, the architects are bringing the owner's vision to life with uh, very differentiated, very differentiated designs and so on. So it's getting more complicated there in terms of geometries and spaces. When it comes to different surfaces, whether it's podiums, roofs, we have uh, hanging swimming pools these days. Roofs are also, you know, well utilized spaces. Podiums, I think, you know, the landscaping elements, the sports tracks, water bodies, uh, we have uh, huge trees now, not just the usual uh, shrubs. So, so they are also getting very, very, you know, uh, evol these spaces are evolving into new, new ways. Basements, basements are also becoming very, very functional. You know, these days, many basements have some of the, you know, clubs, especially in the high rises within the basements, there are many theatres, etc. So, these are also becoming very functional areas. Few paradoxes uh, that we also talked about in waterproofing. One paradox, I think a lot of people ask, okay, what is most cost effective waterproofing? Uh, can we save? Can we can we engineer or uh, value engineer here? Waterproofing just costs 1% one, 1 of the overall building cost, uh, but it causes 80% of the headaches. And most of the failures, when it's done the first time, the failures happen either due to a faulty choice of materials, design or an application. There are many good materials available all around with different companies, but it's a choice uh, and, and the way the method they're applied, especially the sequence of application and in coordination with the contractors, the civil contractor, the client, a lot of things change during the course of the project execution. One of the question which comes back and uh, waterproofing substitute poor quality of concrete work. That's a classic question we have. Uh, drainage, Mr. Mehta was talking about a lot of you know, drainage, little aspects about drainage, whether it's in the basements, whether it's in your around the balconies, uh, whether it's in the bathrooms, every area drainage is again an important element. You can't substitute, you know, not having a drainage uh, and expect waterproofing to do everything. So I'll just quickly touch upon three surfaces uh, or three or four surfaces. In high rises, basements are going to be deep and different basements, uh, you know, they have different profiles depending on the strata. We will have, we will a lot of places where there is high water table, we're going to expect high, very high hydrostatic pressure. So there are pressure relief valves and so on. But what is the best way of waterproofing these? There's no one fix all. There's usually a very, very uh, good combination of different materials. The HDP, which Yogesh was talking about, these, these are not just HDP, the HDP pressure sensitive adhesive membranes, where once these membranes are laid and concrete is poured, these adhere to the rough bottom and that prevents any lateral migration but even then there are you know even with these membranes you will still have problems if your joints are not well done if there is damage to the waterproofing there is going to be a problem so that, that's why it's usually suggested to have a combination of different approaches uh, you have a bonded membrane then a 
also an integral crystalline which effectively can plug to some extent the cracks pores make the concrete denser when it comes to retaining walls there are again depending on the type of construction whether it's a confined unconfined we have a, a self peel and stick kind of a membrane or we do liquid applied membranes but one of the things again a lot of people miss out that you know especially in retaining walls they are going to be prone to you know we will have joints they're going to be prone to honeycombs so there are a lot of problems come in the retaining walls then there are tie rods tie rod holes all those little little things means you know the detailing which is which everybody is talking about the devil lies there whether it's you know the, the joints you have water bars reinject when you have a reinjectable hose done at least it ensures tomorrow there's a problem you still can inject some material plug the holes how are anchors the pressure release pipes uh, joints then there are pile pile heads how are the pile heads uh, you know treated and integrated with the membrane system that you are laying all these go you know into into your waterproofing not just what material you use as a sheet or a liquid podiums again there will be most of the podiums will have water bodies green spaces it's no more about just shrubs today we have trees roots can penetrate so uh, yogesh was talking about you know liquid applied membranes like polyurea hybrid polyureas these are the best systems not because because of two things one they're bonded to the surface and two they have also a strong very high dynamic crack bridging ability so so liquid applied in india what we are seeing is the workmanship level is still yet to evolve uh, in in all these specialized works so liquid applied systems are little less prone to mistake they cover the entire surface very well all corners or angles very well so they are little more idiot proof though they are they also have their own challenges and issues uh, while doing the while laying the membranes expansion joints there are many mechanical systems uh, on the left side you can see these are the podiums uh, with liquid applied there are both hot applied systems which instantly set the cold applied hand applied systems uh, for smaller areas and so on so there are a variety of uh, materials available for different types of situations when it comes to roofs again high rises especially very tall buildings they'll be very very windy and one of the things uh, even in the concreting what we see when concreting is done in very high wind conditions it is prone to more plastic shrinkage cracking and most many plastic shrinkage cracks go through and through and that's why we need a good material which can bridge cracks there'll be structural movements for very tall buildings and so again something that can take care of movements and not uh, you know not uh, uh, disintegrate or deteriorate or break off those are the kind of materials the only thing that uh, we we have to keep in mind is because when we are doing roofs it will be very windy so spray applied systems can be difficult to handle so hand applied liquid membranes are easier to handle and uh, they can you know we can have better workmanship with those systems uh, then we have top coats with polyaspartic top coats if you are leaving the membrane exposed and so on these are very very tough uh, materials roof again is a very very complicated area with so many utilities uh, running so many anchors uh, the h you know the hu units chillers lot of these have upstands anchors then you have got for uh, some of the tall buildings you also need to do maintenance of the curtain walls or the uh, external facade glass facades so they'll be uh, on the parapets or uh, they'll be anchors usually a lot of leakage problems happen when post you know post building is done and all these uh, additions are done the details and they they are not sealed very well wet areas again depending and again on the type of uh, wet area whether it's a concrete wall block wall dry wall there are different types of materials uh, again it's uh, the materials are evolving into more and more flexible materials uh, the cementitious that you found you, you had for the last decade or so is now you know there's there's even more flexible cementitious materials now available pipe penetrations the outlets i think a lot of problems come there it's not grouted well you know there are tapes which come which adhere from both the sides and then they have to be grouted and then not just grouted if you put a sealant around it i think that will effectively seal uh, these will cost just a few hundred rupees or a, maybe a thousand a typical bathroom good waterproofing should not cost more than 4 5 thousand rupees very good waterproof a lot of times we also face a lot of challenge in terms of uh, you know customers asking us to optimize there you buy a flat which is 
a crore, two crores with three bathrooms. You're just spending 15,000 at best in bathroom waterproofing. Why do you want to compromise on that? Tile joints. Uh, somebody asked tile joints. I mean, there are plenty of materials available. Grouts are available, different, whether it's for new construction, whether it's, uh, you know, maintenance during the service. A lot of materials are available. But these details are extremely important. For exteriors, usual paints, again, with the kind of uh, weathering effects that we have, will not last very long. You'll have to keep repainting. These days, you know, the polymerized uh, acrylic emulsion coatings have, have come up. These are much more, you know, flexible and coatings, there's a little difference between coatings and paint. Paints are very thin, coatings are thick. And so they, they provide definitely much better longevity and uh, weatherproofing compared to usual paints. Not just paints, the fenestrations, the facades, the sealants, that, the type of sealant, there are many, plenty of weatherproof sealants, but uh, how well they are used. Nowadays, most uh, high rises are again going for this, uh, you know, monolithic construction with uh, a form finish, whether it's my one or different types of form finishes. Uh, the walls are also concrete. And so there will be tie rods, plugging tie rod holes, corners, joints, everything we talked about. Those are the most important details. All in all, I think if we you know, look at the underlying challenges of waterproofing, I think Mr. Mehta and uh, Yogesh captured that quite well. It's a lot of things need to be done upfront in terms of design. Whether all the stakeholders are involved while designing, that's a question. A lot of times that's, that doesn't happen in, as per in our experience. Then during construction, you know, is the is the sequence, often there's a method statement, but in the, in the actual site condition, the sequence changes. Changes. The contractors change the sequence. Sometimes, you know, they come, okay, you have done the bathrooms of uh, fifth floor, now do the balconies of third floor, now again come back and do the bathroom, rest of the part of fifth floor bathroom. So it all disturbs the entire sequence of work and a lot of problems and a lot of failures happen due to that. And lastly, are we selecting a skilled applicator? This is the most important one and warranties no matter whatever you have on paper ultimately it's uh, you know uh, is the choice of your applicator and whether he has got the skilled manpower to do the job and is he trained enough to do the job that's your biggest warranty otherwise paper doesn't give you that comfort that's uh, those are some of the thoughts i wanted to share thank you so much